Hi everyone, Spiros here uh, in Athens at my office and uh, I have some athletes here they've offered to help me out and I want to share something with you, a piece of information that you know by studying has come up. It has to do with the navicular bone and its name derives from the Latin prefix navi which means boat and maybe you can see it as this boat shape and observe more distally three cuneiforms and even more distally the three metatarsals, the first ones and this will make the medial column. Now what is interesting is in sports especially athletes and other people of course not like professional athletes uh, are prone to a navicular stress injury, a navicular stress fracture and this is mostly due to the load because of tibialis anterior. It's, this has to do with mechanics, but still interesting. But for a reflexologist, the other component that makes the navicular sus susceptible to a fracture is, and especially the medial third. So if I was from the tuberosity of the navicular, until its lateral part divided in three. The middle portion is susceptible to fractures, stress fractures, and it seems that of all the stress-related injury fractures in the foot, 14 to 35 percent have to do with the navicular. Now, I know it's a lot of anatomy, statistics. A doctor will evaluate if there is a fracture or if it has fused, if it has healed, if he is to palpate and press on something called the N spot. The N has to do with the name navicular, and it's in the middle third. Now what makes it interesting, if I ask this athlete, Costas, to bend his foot, bring it up, and medial, esso, we can see tibialis anterior tendon and the hallucis extensor longus tendon, in between release costas, release. This area here towards the second zone is an avas a vascular area. There is no blood supply. It receives blood from the posterior tibial artery and from the anterior tibial artery becomes dorsal pedis and gives branches here. So what this means is we have a watershed area on the navicular, which means there is not sufficient blood supply. And this bringing it to reflexology reminds me what part of the body in this area does not have sufficient blood supply and the lymphatic system came to mind and the structure cisterna chile because it's a delayed lymph sac and their lymph does not have red blood cells in it. It has plasma. It will have a lot of lipids because it has to do with the intestine. So I find the correlation interesting, the coincidence that this bone in this specific part is a vascular and I will add images to this video. And the body part that does not, that lacks sufficient red blood cells is cisterna chile. I've checked some lymphatic uh, reflexes from different schools of thought. They are usually higher. Anatomically, lumbar one and two will be cisterna chile in front of lumbars one and two, the bodies. Uh, famous Lynn Booth of reflexology lymph drainage from her charts, I understand, will place it a bit higher. But this just makes, you know, uh, creates further discussion. But it's an interesting coincidence, so if you work on the, your lymphatics, you might want to think of cisterna chile in this place where a sufficient blood supply is lacking. An interesting coincidence. So, I hope you enjoyed this coincidence, this how we bring it all together. I have courses coming up just now in London, in less than a month, early July, I will be in London with Hagar Basis. August, I will be in Krakow, Poland. And September, if you want to come over to Athens and train with me here in Athens, you know, pick up the Greek vibe. 
It will be end of uh, September. Sportsmen will be back in action. We will have a lot of opportunities to see real cases and bring orthopedic reflexology into practice and effect. Thank you. Bye-bye.